Grand Theft Auto 6 is right around the corner. Well, we don't actually know that for sure, but there's been dozens of leaks and rumors floating around the last few months from reputable sources that state Rockstar is gearing up for a reveal of the game in the near future and potentially launching it within the next 24 months. Now, with how little we know about the next Grand Theft Auto game, the prospect of a new trailer and gameplay showcase is exciting. I'm personally eager to see what's changed since that giant gameplay leak from last year. Rockstar is a very history-driven company, and a lot about their future projects can be inferred by looking at their previous releases and digging into what made them tick. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Chaos here. Today, we're taking a deep dive into Rockstar's development habits and compared them to things we know about GTA 6. We're going to see if we can find some common denominators and possibly figure out what the past, specifically GTA 5, can tell us about the future. In this case, GTA 6. What's hidden? in GTA 5 that may give us some ideas of what's coming for GTA 6. You never know, Rockstar may be putting stuff in the game uh, and trying to say, look, this is, this is where we're going, but I can't tell you outright. Let me know in the comments what you want to get out of GTA 6. Drop a like and let's dive into this. Now, the first thing we can learn from GTA 6 in regards to uh, the release window and the development time. Rockstar's history with game development has been pretty weird. As in the early years of GTA, they were pumping out new games extremely quick, but once we crossed over into the world of the HD era, they slowed things down. GTA 3 was the first fully 3D open world game that Rockstar ever developed, and it's widely seen as the first modern open world game of all time. It launched in 2001, but believe it or not, despite its insane innovation and size for that time, it was only in development for two years. Only had 23 people working on it. Now, to be fair to Rockstar, this was back when game development was much simpler, but it's still crazy to think about how long games take to develop now. Back in the early 2000s, one of the most innovative open world HD games of all time was made in less than two years. Now, following GTA 3, a sequel called GTA Vice City, you're familiar, was put together in just 18 months and released in late 2002. Now, granted, the team was more than double in size this time around, but still, one of the best GTA games of all time, in my opinion, was made in a year and a half. Now, again, to be fair to Rockstar, Vice City recycled a lot of GTA 3's assets. It was mainly focused on enhancing the gameplay mechanics and world building as opposed to creating something new from scratch. San Andreas, they wrapped up the PS2 trilogy. Game was put together in roughly two years once again. Featured a lot of recycled assets from the previous games, and there was more focus about enhancing the formula. A San Andreas would become somewhat infamous for being jam-packed with side content in many games, and that's kind of what Rockstar got in trouble for. Now we arrive at Grand Theft Auto 4. This was when Rockstar officially crossed over into the new gen, and that came with a long list of bumps in the road. The game was being built for the first generation of HD consoles, which meant almost anything they had done in the previous GTA games had to be remade from scratch. This is part of the reason why GTA 4 was relatively stripped down and less goofy than the previous games. I mean, not only did Rockstar want to tell a more grounded, realistic story in the HD game, they needed to put a lot of additional time into creating the world and making sure everything looked good, which meant a lot of side content and many games had to be cut. Now, compared to the PS2 trilogy, GTA 4 is missing quite a bit of content, but it's still considered by many to be the best game in the series because of how fine-tuned everything is. The shooting was improved, the AI is great, the animations were good, the attention to detail, it's incredible. Playing GTA 4 today, it can be easy to forget that the game came out in 2008, but I know that's not the topic. I just can't help but gush about GTA 4 when I get the chance. It was in development for three and a half years, by far the longest cycle of any Rockstar game at that time. The jump to HD graphics meant the team had to learn to fly and push this new technology to its limit, which became something that Rockstar was known for. No matter the game, Rockstar is always going to push things to their absolute limit, and that was also the case with GTA 5, which is the real reason I started going on this development rant in the first place. I promise this is all going to make sense. Just stick with me, okay? GTA 5. In development for five years. Once again, most of its content had to be rebuilt from the ground up as opposed to recycling GTA 4's material. Not only was GTA 5 huge compared to Rockstar's other work, but it was also by far the most alive map they've ever made tons of times and assets put into modeling real-world Southern California locations in order to make Los Santos as realistic as possible. They wanted to make sure every little bit of it felt true to life, which means lots of new radio stations, thousands of NPC dialogue lines, a complete overhaul of the gunplay, cover system, make it all modern. There was also a total overhaul of the driving from GTA 4 in order to make it smoother, less clunky. We could go on and on. That was greatly appreciated, although there will always be people who prefer the less durable nature of GTA 4's driving, but that's not the point. The point I'm getting at is that with every new GTA game, 
Rockstar takes more and more time to get the job done because not only are they rebuilding most of their content from the ground up on a new engine in a new setting, they're also doing their best to make each game feel distinct from the others. In other franchises like Call of Duty or Halo, a lot of things are copy-pasted from game to game, but uh, I mean mechanics, animations, textures, maps, you name it. Rockstar seems to refuse to take that route, though, because they want every game to feel like it's a total evolution of the last, which is why GTA 6 has been in the oven for so long. Now, there have been conflicting reports regarding when GTA 6 actually started development. Some Rockstar workers have claimed that early storyboarding and brainstorming on the game started in 2013, which is 10 years ago. But rumors of actual development didn't start floating around until 2015, which is eight years ago. Then again, Red Dead Redemption 2 came out in 2018, and that game was reportedly in development for close to eight years, so it's not likely that GTA 6 entered legitimate production until after RDR 2 launched. Most industry insiders agree. GTA 6's development really kicked off in 2019, meaning it's been in development for about four years. So given what we know about how long Rockstar likes to take with their games, a 2019 development start would probably put GTA 6's release date around 2025 or 6. Now it gives it seven years in the oven, which I think is fair, especially when you consider that for about two years everybody was working from home and there's only so much you could get done. Now there's been a number of reports coming out stating that GTA 6 is going to launch late 2024 to early 2025, which means if the 2019 development start time is accurate, that's about five years in the oven-ish. That may seem a little quick by Rockstar standards, but then again, if storyboarding and brainstorming actually started in the mid-2010s, five years of active development might be long enough to get the job done in solid fashion. So when we're looking to the past for ideas on the future, GTA 5's open world design and modern day setting could give us some clues as to the areas where Rockstar wants to improve. In the leaked gameplay from last year, we learned definitively that GTA 6 is going to be set in a modern day, which I actually found a little surprising, but it is what it is. Rockstar likes to keep their games as true to their time period as possible, and if GTA 6 is being set in modern day, we can look at the things that were parodied in GTA 4 and 5 to get a good idea of what the team is doing this time. Of all the recent events that would make their way into a Grand Theft Auto game, I'm fully expecting there to be some kind of cryptocurrency plot line in the game, and I'm 99% sure there will probably be Teslas driving around. GTA 5 also incorporated gameplay mechanics that were popular in other third-person games at that time, which is why the total overhaul of the cover system to make it play more like games like Uncharted and Gears of War is there. GTA 6 has already proven that it's taking inspiration from games like Payday 2 for its robbery mechanics, as that leaked gameplay from last year had the player managing hostages. They were tying people up. They were doing minor crowd control. There is also now a prone button, light stealth mechanics, which makes total sense given how popular things have become in AAA games over the last decade. After all, you'd be hard-pressed to find a third-person AAA game from the last 5 to 10 years that does not have some kind of stealth mechanics. Now, I'm also guessing the GTA 6 is going to take cue from recent shooting games and incorporate things like predictive recoil patterns and more skill-based shooting. However, if there's one thing I really don't want to show up in GTA 6, it's enemy levels. The lead gameplay showed some light RPG elements, including player levels, which I don't really want this to mean that the enemies will have levels. I don't. GTA is a sandbox game where you're supposed to figure out solutions to your problems on your own, and that includes dealing with cops however you want. It would seriously break the immersion if you were driving around the map and then you got stomped by a level 50 super cop with a minigun, all because you were playing too well in the previous missions. Don't make it happen. Rockstar loves taking inspiration from recent games, and they're clearly doing that for GTA 6, but the inclusion of RPG elements, that worries me. Red Dead Redemption 2 did its best to incorporate light RPG and survival elements without needing to use enemy levels, but now that GTA 6 is seemingly taking things a step further, I just really hope Rockstar doesn't take a page out of Ubisoft's book and start giving all their enemies levels. So overall, GTA 6 is shaping up to be, you already know, the biggest game of all time. I'm excited. There's a handful of Rockstar habits that I'm hoping don't find their way into the final product. I'm all for a deep open world with an insane amount of detail, and I'm definitely down for some Payday 2-esque mechanics, but other things like character levels and enemy levels, I'm iffy. Rockstar does like to carve their own path for their games, but they also like to prove why they're on the top of the mountain in AAA gaming, and that means they like to prove to everyone that they're the best at whatever's popular. That's why GTA 5 had cover shooting. That's why RDR 2 had survival mechanics. And it's why GTA 6 is looking like it's going to uh, be what it is. Now, I want to remind everybody that things I'm concerned about aren't 100% confirmed yet. So the only evidence we have from them are older leak builds of the game. And even within that build, 
the problematic mechanics weren't super deep or anything, like I said. So I may be getting a little too ahead of myself. I just really don't want to see GTA 6 turn into a Ubisoft game. I don't. I want it to be GTA 6. So like, you let me know. What do you think about the game in the comments? Is there anything from GTA 5 uh, that we can predict for GTA 6? Do you think there's anything hidden in the game that Rockstar's trying to give us these clues about when it comes to the new game? I'll keep you guys covered if anything new breaks, and I'll see you soon.